morning everyone today we're gonna read yet another version of a Cinderella story and this next version I really enjoy a lot um it's one of my favorites and just like with all the other Cinderella stories we've been reading I would love it if you could just think about how this story and the characters in this story and the different elements of this story are similar to and different from the other Cinderella stories that we've read so far. So we're going to read this one today. It's called The Rough Face Girl and this story is by Reef Martin and David Shannon. Once, long ago, there was a village by the shores of Lake Ontario. Off from the other wigwams of this village stood one great huge wigwam. Painted on its sides were pictures of, of the sun, moon, stars, plants, trees, and animals. And inside this wigwam there was said to live a very great, rich, powerful, and supposedly handsome, invisible being. However, no one could see him, except his sister, who lived there too. Many women wanted to marry this invisible being, but his sister said only the one who can see him can marry him. And I know I've mentioned the word wigwam a few times. This is what a wigwam is. So this is the shelter that they live in. Now in this village, there lived a poor man who had three daughters. The two older daughters were cruel and hard-hearted, and they made their youngest sister sit by the fire and feed the flames. When the burning branches popped, the sparks fell on her. In time, her hands became burnt and scarred. Her arms, too, became rough and scarred. Even her face was marked by the fire, and her beautiful, long, black hair hung ragged and charred. And those two older sisters laughed at her, saying, Ha! You're ugly, you rough-faced girl. And they made her life very lonely and miserable indeed. One day, these two older sisters went to their father and said, Father, give us some necklaces. Give us some new buckskin dresses. Give us some pretty beaded moccasins. We're going to marry the invisible being. So their father gave them these things. Dressed in their finest, the two girls marched through the village. All the people pointed and stared. Look at those beautiful girls, they said. Surely they shall marry the invisible being. And those two girls were proud and hard-hearted before, but now they were even Powder. They walked haughtily through the village. At last they came to the wigwam of the invisible being, and there was his sister, waiting. Why have you come? she asked. We want to marry the invisible being, they answered. That's why we're here. If you want to marry my brother, she replied, you have to have seen him. Tell me, have you seen the invisible being? Of course we've seen him, they insisted. Can't you see how pretty we are? Can't you see how beautiful we are and the clothes that we're wearing? Oh yes, anyone can tell that we've truly seen the invisible being. All right, she said quietly. If you think you've seen him, then tell me. What's his bow made of? And suddenly her voice was swift as lightning and strong as thunder. His, his bow, they stammered in surprise. His uh, bow, uh, we know, we know. But turning desperately to one another, they whispered, what shall we say? Let's say an oak tree. So they said, it's the great oak tree. No, said the sister of the invisible being, no. Oh, she saw at once how they lied. Tell me, she continued, if you think that you've seen my brother, the invisible being, then what's the runner of his sled made of? Oh, we know, we know, cried the two sisters, but whispering feverishly, again, they wondered, what shall we say, what shall we say? Let's say it's the green willow branch. No, said the sister, when she heard, no, you have not seen my brother. Now go home. Just test us fairly, they exclaimed, we've seen him, just don't ask us all these silly questions. All right, said the sister of the invisible being, come with me. And she stood with, er, and she took them back to the great wigwam and sat them in their seats furthest from the entrance, the guest seats. Soon they heard footsteps coming along the path. Then something stepped inside. 
though they heard breathing, the two sisters still couldn't see a thing. Suddenly a great bow and a beaded quiver of arrows appeared in the air and were set down. But though those two girls sat there, their eyes wide, all through that night they never saw a thing more. And in the morning, they had to go home, ashamed. The next day, the rough-faced girl went to her father and said, Papa, may I please have some beads? May I please have a new buckskin dress and some pretty moccasins? I am going to marry the invisible being, for wherever I look, I see his face. But her father sighed. Daughter, he said, I'm sorry. I have no beads left for you, only some little broken shells. I have no buckskin dress. And as for moccasins, all I have left are my old, worn, cracked, and stretched out pair from last year. And they're much too big. But she said, whatever you can spare, I can use. So he gave her these things. Then she found dried reeds and taking the little broken shells, she strung a necklace. She stripped birch bark from the dead trees and made a cap, a dress, and leggings. Then with a sharp piece of bone, she carved the bark pictures in, of the sun. She carved in the bark. Excuse me. Pictures of the sun, moon, stars, plants, trees, and animals. She went down to the lake shore and soaked the moccasins in the water until they grew soft. Then she molded them to her feet, but they were still still too big, and they flap, flap, flap like duck's feet as she walked. Then all the people came out of their wigwams. They pointed and stared. Look at that ugly girl. They laughed. Look at that girl with her strange clothes. Hey, hey, go home, you ugly girl. You'll never marry the invisible being. But the rough-faced girl had faith in herself, and she had courage. She didn't turn back. She kept walking right through the village. As she walked on, she saw the great beauty of the earth and sky spreading before her. And truly, she alone, of all in that village, saw in these things the sweet yet awesome face of the invisible being. This is my favorite book, or well, this is one of my favorite books, but this is my favorite picture in the book. If you can see in the sky, these birds and this mountain, they look like they're creating a face, right? So we'll read tomorrow to find out if the girl marries the invisible being. But, you know, this story is, it's a lot different from the other Cinderella stories. So if we were to make a Venn diagram about this story and Bigfoot Cinderella, for example, we'd probably have a lot on the outsides of the chart of comparing Ella and the rough face girl. And maybe not so much on the inside because these stories are kind of different. But this story, the rough face girl, still has a lot of elements of Cinderella stories. And we'll find out more tomorrow. So thank you for listening and have a great rest of your day.